Uh, a German Waterloo out of Hitler's Waterloo. <laughs> Maybe you know that reference. Maybe you don't. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I'm feeling better in the last few days. I'm feeling like I can do some quality videos once again. And we are back at the analytical mechanical stuff. Okay. So I want to discuss a topic with you that's quite important later on when discussing Lagrangian mechanics. So bear with me on this one. We are going to derive the velocity for... It doesn't quite matter, it's always the same process for polar coordinates or spherical or cylindrical coordinates. So we are going to start off with polar coordinates in this case. Okay, we want to de derive them. I just want to, guys, you, to, to imagine something. So let's see, there's a coordinate system right here with an x and y axis. Okay, and let's imagine there's an inclined plane right here and there's some angle phi and there's a marble rolling down a hill with some radius r right here. Okay, and just imagine this inclined plane can go up and down and up and down so the angle changes over time. So. Here's something you might notice. R is in terms of t and also phi is in terms of t. Bo both of those will change over time. And the change of distance over time is just the classical velocity. That would be in one dimension, but we are moving in two dimensions now. So we have to also consider this angle phi right here. So what are polar coordinates? Um, let's see. We get an R vector right here. Let's call it R vector. And it, it's in two dimensions, so that means we get an x and a y coordinate. Okay, and they are both dependent of time, just like this right here. And now we want to find expressions for x and y and put it in here. So that's the basic idea. So what we can do, we can make a triangle out of this with some side r right here. And also there's some side x and there's some side I, uh, y. So that's just basic vector calculus. So how can we ex express it? It's quite easy. Well, y, we can just use a rule right here. So the sine of phi is nothing else than opposite over hypotenuse. So that's y over r. And we can solve for y. Same thing for x. So the cosine of phi is nothing else than adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's x over r. We can solve for x and we can plug it in. So what we end up with is just um, r times uh, the cosine, I'm sorry, of phi and also r times the sine of phi. And now we want to find the velocity. And to find out the acceleration, just differentiate it a second time. But we will start off by differentiating it one time. Okay, so we have to differentiate it in terms of t. We want to get the velocity, so that's a sure thing and we would get r prime in terms of t. So that means we have to take the difference or the differential of x and y. So what would we end up with? And remember r is in terms of t and phi is in terms of t. So that means we have to use the product rule at first. So at first we get r prime times the cosine of phi and then positive. Okay, so we leave r as it is and also we get the cosine of phi, but differentiated in terms of t. Well, we have to use the chain rule for that. So at first the outer derivative, that would be minus sine of phi, and then also the inner derivative, phi differentiated in terms of t is just phi prime. So that's the angular velocity. That's great, we can distribute the minus into here and then we would be done. And also same spiel here, so that's r prime times the sine, of phi and then positive r phi prime cosine of phi. So that's a straightforward process and now you could for example get the uh, um, kinetic energy by squaring this one here and you would get a nice answer. That's quite easy. And you can do the same thing for example cylindrical coordinates. So cylindrical coordinates look like this. We get an r vector and it would be in three dimensions. So let's imagine a cylinder right here and well we can move right here on this circle like it would be with polar coordinates but we can move 
up and down on a set coordinate. So we can just combine the polar coordinates with a set coordinate right here. So that's r times the cosine of phi and then r times the sine of phi. And what you would get for the velocity is just this expression right here with some z prime here. And we also have the spherical coordinates, but I will discuss them at a later point of time when we really need them. You can take a look at Wikipedia, for example. It's not too hard to derive them. It's quite some work, but it's not too hard. Um, I hope this helps a little bit. I hope you guys liked this video at least a little bit. If you did um, enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Recommend me if you like. Support me on Patreon if you want. Link in the description. And up until the next video, have a... Give me a second. Anna. Have a meowful day. Oh, what a cute little cat. Look at her. She's so cute. Have a flammable day. See ya.